how does technology play a role in the declining middle class? And how could technologies in the future, including blockchain, reverse that trend? I would like to explain this using some ideas from Jaron Lanier's book, Who Owns the Future? And I'm going to go with his example of musicians to think it through because I think it's really vivid. Even though you can extrapolate the examples to think about how would people in other industries with other skills be subject to the same forces. I'm going to use these two diagrams to think this through. So on the top we have artists, or in this case musicians, where we have a normal distribution of talent among musicians, where the top here is the very most talented, there's a small pool of them, there's a lot of people who are sort of in the middle, and then there's aspiring musicians who are kind of at the bottom. And this is a essentially a histogram. Now we also need to keep in mind that people almost certainly are going to move up through this distribution as they practice, as they gain more skills. This person at the top who's really, really talented, they started somewhere in the middle or at the bottom and through skill, through deliberate practice, they sort of worked their way up. Now down here we have consumers of music and they're once again lined up where on this graph we have income. So this is the richest person, this is the second richest person. So the people here on the axis, incomes here, talent is on this axis, uh, people are here, but these are going to match up and we're going to be thinking about how they match up. Now, the short version of what's happened since technology came on the scene is that you used to have to match up more or less one-on-one -on -one with the, the musician. Like there was a time in history when you had to be in the same room as the musician, meaning a lot of musicians were employed by regular people who just wanted some kind of music. Technology essentially makes it such that all of these people in the population can have access to the very top most talented people. And in essence, that essentially eliminates the jobs of a lot of musicians kind of in the middle. Now, one of the things he points out in this book is that a healthy system requires a thriving middle class. And that's essentially because the middle class is the space where musicians can build their talent. And he actually points out the same thing with professors. Uh, professors get lots of space to have a middle class job while we develop our, our skills in teaching, our skills in doing research, our skills in innovative thinking. And that long period of time where we're practicing uh, explaining things to people where we're practicing playing with new ideas. That actually makes the very top tiers of the intellectual class way more thriving if that middle class exists. So in the book, he is very much lamenting the fact that technology has eliminated a workaday job for artists and intellectuals and for a lot of different professions because everybody just has access to the very top tier. Now I have hope that some of the blockchain-based technologies can enable that eventually to come back, can enable a reversal of the trend. But before I explain that, I want to go through sort of a historical way of looking at this diagram. So I would like to think about the musician example with these diagrams in five different worlds. One of those worlds is going to be where each person who wants music has to hire someone to play in their living room. And of course, this is a world that never actually existed because it's a world where there's no such thing as a concert. So of course, if you can only hire musicians for your living rooms, there is going to be a one-on-one -on -one connection between everyone who wants to consume music, or at least every household who wants to consume music, and the musician. So because human beings love music, this is going to be a world where there are a lot of employed musicians. Now historically this world didn't exist because if you rewind back to the time when there was no theaters, well, that time was way back in history and people were more focused on just sustaining their own existence, more focused on buying food than buying luxuries. 
and of course having stadiums or large gatherings for people probably existed far back into antiquity so this never actually existed but this is a thought experiment it's helping us think about the evolution of technology then we go to our second world where suddenly there are stadiums of people who can all listen to one of the best musicians for one performance. So what happens here is that there are probably still some occasional people who hire out musicians for their living room or for their wedding or whatnot. But many, many people go to these concerts and therefore a lot of musicians who were previously employed in people's living rooms are no longer employed. In this case, it's really the top group who get to give concerts. But there's still a lot of positions because this, this performance has to happen live, people have to buy tickets, so you need enough performers to sort of fill out uh, one for every 200 people in the audience. So we see here that we're shrinking the number of producers, but we still have a sustainable producer class. Now our third model is our record model. And the key thing with this model is that many, many people can listen to the same single performance over and over. So the very top people are able to make a lot of money because a single hour of their time recording something, or maybe it's eight hours or whatever, is going to uh, be distributed throughout a much larger set of people, each perhaps paying a much smaller price than they paid for the ticket to the opera. but. When you add that up, it, it channels a lot more money toward the very top. And this is, of course, where you start to get a Pareto distribution, which perhaps you've seen, where the top 1% of people make a, a lion's share of the income in a particular industry. So as we move through these three models, we're moving closer and closer to a really dramatic Pareto distribution. And of course, that Pareto distribution is associated with inequality. Now, the other thing that happens with the record version of this world is that you start to have important intermediaries. These are record companies whose job it is to distribute the records. They design the contracts, they work with lawyers, they make sure that people aren't copying your records illegally, they have a big role, and they're doing things that are important for those top performers to be able to make money. But of course, these intermediaries are taking a pretty big cut as well. So keep that in mind. Now we move to the internet world. Now the internet world is actually pretty similar to the record world with a few key exceptions. It's going to make our Pareto distribution even more dramatic, even more uh, associated with a highly unequal society. And that has to do with how, how people find top performers, how easy is it for them to download a new song. There, there's some technical details about that, but it's basically going to exacerbate the Pareto distribution. Those are the first four worlds. The last world is one that hasn't even close to happened yet, but we're starting to have technologies, especially those related to blockchain, that could enable a reversal of this Pareto distribution trend. And some people are calling this Web 3.0, I don't know if that term is going to stick, but there are a suite of technologies related to blockchain that are trying to do this, so let me give you a taste for what they're trying to do. The first thing they're trying to do is to create smart contracts that do the same thing as those intermediaries, so that the intermediaries, these companies that have lawyers and uh, technological ways of making sure people don't copy the artists work, they have a lot of structure in these intermediaries that has been necessary to make sure the artist gets their work even when that work is being copied over and over and over. Smart contracts are designed to move that power and that money that's going into these intermediaries into the hands of the artist. So that's one thing that's going on. A second thing that smart contracts could enable in the future is an ecosystem of artists where everybody is trying to move up the chain in the artist world with the assumption, and not only the assumption, but with smart contracts in that ecosystem that guarantee if you end up at the top of that Pareto distribution, 
a lot of the money that's going toward you will be channeled toward people in the middle. And if you, if you just implement this automatically right now, the people at the top are going to be like, no way, I earned my way to the top. I don't need to pay those uh, middle tier artists. I'm better than them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if you start everyone while they're still working their way up in the artist world, when they don't yet know, am I going to be that person at the top or am I going to be in the middle or at the 75th percentile? When they're in that early stage, if you say, hey, you're going to sign a contract saying, we're going to support you while you're in the middle class. But the cost of that is if you reach the very top, a lot of your money has to be rechanneled to support the middle class. A lot of the up and coming artists may gladly agree to that. And I could imagine a community that really supports that ethos that we want middle class artists to be able to support a family. So smart contracts could be developed that would make that happen within an ecosystem. And then the third element of this new world is you could get non-fungible tokens that are associated with ownership of a person's creative work in a way that has new features that we didn't see in the past. For example, if you could pay to own an artist's work such that if that artist's work got picked up somewhere else, you would make part of the profits, you're kind of investing in that artist that you care about, investing in their future success, and you could get a benefit by identifying the up and coming artists early. And there could be other types of contracts. For example, maybe there are a few lyrics to a new song from an artist you like that are up for grabs, that you would have the opportunity to participate in the development of those lyrics, to actually co-create with the artists that you love. And smart contracts, non-fungible tokens, these may enable more creative ways of interacting between the music listener and the, the artist. And that creativity that these new contracts could allow could create new structures besides just performing in your living room, besides just going to a live concert, other ways that there could be unique and meaningful relationships between artists and the people who consume their work and want to support their work. So that's the hope is that the Pareto distribution that has become so dramatic could be disrupted by some of these new technologies. It'll take a while for those technologies to actually develop, but that's the hope and it's, and it's really exciting.